Hello, and thank you for stopping by the 741 channel. Today's project is to assemble this charbroil four burner gas grill that I got at Lowe's. So the first thing I'll take out of the box is the paperwork. Presumably there's instructions and warranty information and maybe even some advertising and things like that in there. The first thing I noticed in the instructions is this warning leaflet that uh, has some instructions on checking out the gas piping before the grill is started for the first time. So I'll keep this in mind but I'll set it aside because I don't need it right now. You can see here the product guide that's also in the packet is both the instruction manual, which is at sort of the beginning of the book. It has all the various languages, English, Spanish, and, and starting in the middle of the book are the assembly instructions. So this is what I'll be looking at now. So I'll go ahead and set this aside and start taking the rest of the items out of the box. As you can see here, I've got all of the pieces out of the main box. The main grill body appears to be assembled in one piece. And then there's some various grills and racks and things and there's a whole other box of parts down here that was in the side of the main box. And then I noticed under the hood here there's uh, some more parts that'll need to be assembled as well. It took me a little while to find but I finally found the uh, hardware that goes with this. And this was in the big box that was located inside the grill body itself. And you can see here that they've got everything kind of arranged neatly in these blister packs so that Everything is sort of easy to find. You don't have to dig through a, a loose hardware bag. So that's kind of a nice touch. So kind of a nice touch here that I noticed is that they have uh, each of the item numbers marked here on the back of the hardware blister pack. And uh, this correlates to the hardware item in the instructions. So, so step one involves attaching the two sides to the bottom where the propane tank will go. So I believe I have these oriented in the manner that the instructions call for. You can see I've got the, the side with the, the chain and the hook on it here on the left side. I've got the propane tank tray with the propane tank to the left and then the other side, the one without the, the chain on it, is over here. Now the way this will go together, you can see there's some ears with slots in them and they align to holes in the bottom of each of the sides and then we'll just use these A bolts, four of them, one through each hole and uh, four of the nuts here that are labeled B and just put everything together that way. So at this point you'll also need a Phillips or a flathead screwdriver. You can see here that these screws have accommodations for either. And you'll probably also want a 10 millimeter or 7 16 uh, wrench on hand. Uh, I found that either one will probably work, but the 10 millimeter seems to fit a little better. So these are probably metric fasteners, especially coming from China. That's what I would think. For the next step, you can see that I stood the frame up and I've got it turned around so that the chain is now on my right when looking in this orientation. So now what I want to do is I want to mount this bar, this crossbar, to the front and it looks like I'm going to put it where these captive fasteners are uh, pressed into the sides of the rails here. And according to the instructions, what I need to do first is install two of the screws to accommodate this sort of slip hook here on the uh, on the crossbar and then once this is in place then the two bottom screws can be installed and tightened. So it looks like the next step is to mount these two sheet metal panels on this side of the grill opposite this crossbar that I just installed and these will be installed using the D screws from the blister pack, which look like they're sort of self-tapping screws that just go into little pre-drilled holes in the frame here. And you can see these sheet metal panels are more or less identical, except that one has the serial number and warning information on it, 
and the other one has no labeling at all. So I just wanted to quickly show that on these sheet metal panels there's two sets of holes on the side. There's one that's sort of just a regular hole and one with I guess kind of a raised collar on it and uh, is a little bit closer to the middle of the panel. The ones that you want to use to mount these to the frame are the ones with the collars on them. Those are the ones that line up to the pre-drilled holes in the frame. So you can see for the next step I've got the frame laid back down again and now I'm going to install these plastic feet on the longer legs here and it looks like they just snap on with sort of the taper facing towards the outside so I'm just going to line that up and pound that on. I'll repeat the same for the bottom one again with the taper facing the outside or in this case facing the floor. The next step in the process is going to be to install the wheels and what I'll call an axle. So you can see that the axle has a sort of a nail head end and a free end with a hole in it. You can also see here that the wheel has sort of a side with a taper on it and a flat side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by putting the wheel on the axle with the flat side facing the nail head so that it sits down on the nail head. Then I'm going to drop on one of these spacers that's here. I believe this is part E. The next thing that I'll do is I'll put this through the frame. I'm going to first tip this up and slide this through the holes that are here. So next I'll take the remaining spacer, drop that over the axle, and then I'll drop the, uh, the remaining wheel over the axle with the taper facing in towards the frame. The flat washer here, I believe this is part F, drop that over the axle and then I can take the cotter pin that's here and put that through the hole in the axle to hold on the wheels. The next step is going to be to install this rod in the frame. One end has a hook as you can see here. The other end has sort of a flat with a slot in it. So I'm going to take the hook end and I'm going to drop that through some holes that are in these back sheet metal plates and then I'll line up the flat with the slot to a pre-drilled hole in the bottom of the frame here and I'll use my remaining sheet metal screw I think this was uh, the D screw to install this. The next step is going to be to install this sheet metal tray with the this side up stamped <laughs> on it so, the, so that this side is up and you can probably see on the side here that this has some nice captive fasteners in it. So those will line up to some holes that are here in the frame and we'll use the A screws to mount those in. The next step is going to be the fun part where we get to marry the grill body to the frame. So as you can see, the grill body just sits on the tray like that and now I'll attach it with the four screws here on either side. The next step is going to be to install the uh, right side of the grill or the side without the burner in it and the way this goes on you can see there's some keyhole slots in the metal here there's one on this side and one on this side these are just going to slip over and drop onto some preloaded screws that are in the side of the grill once those slip on then there's a third screw that'll go into a threaded insert up here on the side and that'll get snugged up it won't get fully tightened it'll get snugged in for now and then uh, a loose screw and nut will go here in this hole. So next up I'll install this screw and nut that are going to go on this part of the shelf. And you can see I've got this uh, washer preloaded on the screw 
because the screw head is just uh, a little bit smaller than the hole. This will help keep it from pulling through the hole. And I'm going to insert it with the screw head on the inside of the drill. And then I'll put the nut on under the shelf. And now I'll start, now I'll tighten everything up, starting with this screw. I found I was able to hold that with my fingers to keep it from spinning, but you may want to use a wrench on there just to be sure. Right now we're looking underneath the side shelf and I realize there's a couple of screws that I missed installing when I installed the side shelf. And you can kind of see them there, they're under the front lip of the shelf and they're just up behind and they attach to the sort of the front burner plate and help kind of secure everything. And there's two on this side and two on the other side and we'll just use those short screws to put these on. So next up I'll install the burner side shelf the same way I did the other side. I'll drop the keyhole slots over the preloaded screws. Then I'll install this top right screw and snug it up. And then I'll install the loose uh, screw and bolt over here. So here's what the two on the burner shelf side look like. They're kind of up behind the burner and would be a lot easier to install before the burner is installed. But like I said, since I forgot to install them, I'm going to do it now. The next step is going to be to mount the burner control and burner control trim ring to the front panel of the burner shelf. Now the first thing that I'm going to want to do is remove these screws that were preloaded at the factory. I'm just going to set those aside for a moment. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the burner control up behind the plate and then I'm going to line up those threaded holes with the two holes in the front of the burner uh, plate here. Once I get those roughly aligned, then I'm going to take the trim ring and slip that over and try and line that up as well. This is going to require some patience. And just a note on the trim ring, you want to orient it with the circle up so that it matches the other burners. So once I have the screws just snugged up, I'm going to kind of center the burner trim ring there and then tighten everything down. Now that everything's tight, I can just push this knob on and this just goes on with some force and then it's on there and good to go. The next thing to do is to install the side burner. And you can see on the back of the side burner there is the uh, igniter and then there's a threaded stud which will accept a wing, net, wing nut to hold everything on. So what I'm going to do is drop this in from the top with the tube facing the front of the grill. And there are holes here in the sheet metal, one on the back for the wing nut stud and then there's a bigger one on the side for the igniter. So now with the burner through the hole and the igniter and wing nut stud lined up, I'm going to engage the burner tube with the burner control and just let that kind of sit loosely for now. The next thing I'll do is install this wire onto the igniter and this is just a push on terminal like that. I'll install the wing nut on the burner just to get everything kind of secured. The next thing I'll do is install this spring clip that will hold the burner tube 
and the burner control together. So this has a longer hooked end that will go into a hole in the bottom of the burner tube and then a rounder end which will clip over the uh, fitting here on the burner control. So I'm going to find the hole and put in the hooked end first and then kind of bring this together and get that over the you can see I kind of got that over the fitting on the burner control and that's sort of holding everything together now. Now that I've got the burner all put together, I can drop the burner grill over the top and that just lines up with these four holes here as you can see. And then there's sort of a recessed handle so you can pick that up and move it. That should probably be towards the front. The next item to install are these sheet metal burner shields. Now you can see on one end of each of these shields there are two tabs and those just slip into a couple of slots that are cut in the sheet metal of the grill body uh, sort of in front of each burner control and then the back side of this thing has no tabs on it and that just sits on top of a lip in the back of the uh, grill body next up we can install the cast iron grates now there's three of these and according to the instructions the two fatter ones need to go towards the left, but I don't know that it matters. You can probably arrange these any way you want to. Next up, I can install the upper rack. And you can see that on either end of the rack are these uh, long protrusions. And these are going to slip through holes in the sheet metal cover of the grill here. So I'll slip one side in first and then kind of back the other side in. And while holding that in, I've got the, um, the movable part of the grill. I'm going to squeeze these in slightly and hook these hook ends into these bosses that are in either side of the grill body here. Okay, now that that's in place, you can see that it'll move along with the cover as I open and close it. The next step is going to be to install this retaining clip using one of the short screws. And this just goes over the gas line and kind of holds it in place and attaches to this threaded insert that's here in the side of the grill leg. Next up I'm going to install the included AAA battery into the igniter and that's done by just loosening this thing up and you can see there's a spring loaded contact in there. So I'm going to drop the battery in with the negative end going inside the grill. The positive end is facing out and then I'll just screw this back on making sure that spring kind of goes over the battery. Now that that's tight should be able to hear that working over the traffic outside. Next up I'm going to install the grease tray or drip pan or whatever you want to call this. And this just goes in uh, from the back here. Uh, you can see that there are these sort of tapered ears that stick up. And what I'm going to want to do is put the front of the pan inside of those ears, kind of slide it in like that, and then the back of the pan will drop down behind these other tabs that are here to keep it from sort of falling out on its own. And then if you want to take it back out, you can just lift it up and pull it out that way. And now that that's in, I can install the smaller drip tray in the bottom here, and that just kind of goes in the same way. Just at an angle and then it drops down so that it's below the, the lips there so it doesn't pull back out. Okay. So now I can put the propane tank in, and it's just going to sit in here like this. So now I'll just spin this around and get it oriented so that the valve opening is sort of aligned. I've got that more or less aligned, but before I put this in place, I want to make sure the tank is off. And I'm going to secure it down with the thumb screw 
that's on the bottom here. So now I'll just connect up the gas hose to the tank by pushing that onto the end of the tank there. And I'll just screw this in place. And I'll get that nice and snug. And we should be almost ready to fire this thing up. So I was taking a look at the warning paper here, this checklist that I found in the instructions when I first opened up the grill. And I've gone through and checked off all these items. I've done all these things, including installing that clip, which you guys saw me do. I've got all the burners off. The propane tank is still off. I haven't turned that on yet. There's one thing missing from this checklist that I feel should be on there, and that is removal of the stickers that are on here. Um, I really don't think it's a good idea to fire this thing up with these stickers on, especially the one up here on top of the grill. Because as soon as that heats up, those things are going to melt. I think these are vinyl. So we've got those off. So with all that stuff done, now I think we're ready to turn the gas on and uh, light it up for the first time. So I think I'm ready to fire this thing up. I've got the valve on the propane tank on. So now I should be able to just turn on the first burner here hit the igniter and it should light. It looks like it's doing good, so I'll turn on the next one. That seems to be okay. I'll fire up the next one. That one seems to be going good. And now I'll turn the last one on. seems to be doing good. So while that's going, I'll actually try the side burner as well. And this one, of course, I'm probably going to have to hit the igniter again. There we go. And that fired right up. No problems there. So I'm going to let this burn on uh, high temperature for a little while, just to uh, burn off all the manufacturing oils and all that sort of thing. So I guess that's pretty much going to do it. I'm just going to let this burn in a little bit more, and then uh, I guess it'll be time to cook some supper. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. Thanks for watching.